let's talk about Sakamoto days. So, it was recently announced that Sakamoto Days is going to be receiving an anime schedule for 2025 of January, being produced by TMS Entertainment, going to be on Netflix, that's very important, but we'll get to that later. I've been very loosely following Sakamoto Days throughout its run in Weekly Shonen Jump, as I like to keep up to date with all the series that are in Shonen Jump, and seeing that Sakamoto Days didn't get axed right in the first 16 chapters was very nice. Besides the point, as of the day that I am recording this video, we just got the first teaser trailer for Sakamoto Days and oh Oh my God, does this look so damn good. Now I'm gonna stop right there because I don't want this whole video of just being me praising Sakamoto days for simply just how it looks. I wanna talk about a potential issue at hand. And that has to do with that silly little point that I made earlier about it being on Netflix. The whole point that I'm getting at here is that this series is gonna be airing on Netflix. We don't know if it's gonna be weekly, like how some newer series have been, or if it's just gonna be one big bulk release. But regardless, it's gonna be on Netflix. And that is a little bit concerning to me considering how some Netflix only anime series have been received because as I'm sure we're all aware there are a handful of series that were only aired on Netflix that just did not get the proper amount of love some series like Record of Ragnarok, Shaman King, or even Eden Zero I didn't hear anybody really talking about those except for maybe Record of Ragnarok just because of how not good it was but that's besides the point but you may be saying well Egan there are a handful of anime that have had very successful on Netflix. And to that, I say you are absolutely right. There have been a handful of series that have come from Netflix that have won even anime of the year. I'm talking about stuff like Devilman, Crybaby, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. And if we're going to take a step away from anime of the year, there are still so many popular series that were aired on Netflix. Cases like Beastars and Seven Deadly Sins. Sure, Seven Deadly Sins started to fall off a little bit because of the animation, but that's besides the point. It was popular and you know its name. But hey, this situation could be a lot worse dependent on if it was on some other streaming platform platforms and Disney I'm looking straight at you and your motherfucking eyes there have been a very specific set amount of anime that were scheduled and set to air on Disney plus and have and nobody talks about them at all you guys remember that one silly series that kind of took over 2021 for a good while and was the talk of the town for a chunk of time Tokyo Avengers? Yeah, it has two more seasons now. I bet your ass didn't know about that. Or what about some other series that started on Disney Plus, like Undead Unluck? I have heard nobody talk about any of the anime series from Disney Plus, except for maybe people here on YouTube like Mother's Basement. Thank the goddamn Lord that Bleach had such a reputation before the Thousand Year Blood War arc started on Disney Plus, because I... Uh, I would have lost my mind. As I'm sure some of you are able to tell by at this point with my rambling, that this video is gonna be about streaming services and marketing. When it comes to newer anime, you really gotta push it out the best you can so that when the anime actually drops, there can be a successful hype season for it and that people will be talking about it on the internet. Netflix does kind of manage to do this in a nice manner sometimes. As of recently, it's taken the release schedule like every other streaming platform has and decided to start releasing series weekly, which I think they should have done from the beginning. I get that Netflix's whole thing is just, oh, bulk release and then you can binge watch. But for the love of God, can you please follow the format that this medium is originally intended for? Because I would have loved it if part six of JoJo's was released weekly, like some of your other series you were doing at the time. I digress. As I've stated before, Netflix does have a handful of series that did have successful runs on their platform. I just really hope that this is gonna be one of them. Sakamoto Days in and of itself is not a super popular series as there are a ton of other popular shonen series in the same magazine that are currently taking the world by storm. Some of these series consist of My Hero Academia, One Piece, Jujutsu Kaisen, and several more. So due to the manga alone, right off the rip, I'm sure there are not a lot of people that are on the Sakamoto Days radar just because of some of these series that are in its same bubble. So you might be wondering or asking, what is this bad babbling idiot just gonna get to the point what does he want what I want you all to do is to make sure that this series gets the love it deserves because I am so ready to see the praise that this series is gonna get all over the internet. I think this genuinely has the potential to be one of the greats. So now that I've discussed what the issue at hand is, what is the solution? Well, the solution is to just simply follow this series and show it love because there is no way I am letting another Shonen Jump series like Undead Unlocked be left totally under the radar simply 
simply because of bad marketing. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, listening to me ramble. This has been a very unusual video, probably one of the more animated ones that I have ever done. If you guys have enjoyed, please be sure to go ahead and drop a like down below. It's always greatly appreciated. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe if you guys want more content like this. If you have that being said, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ziga Media, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy. Pew.